let's get started here, everyone. Good afternoon, or I should say good evening, golf friends. Welcome to my webinar series, Tuesday Traces. The purpose of this webinar is to show how the V1 pressure mat powered by Body Track is used. Tonight, I'm super excited because we're broadcasting live from the Carolinas with Mike Sullivan. Mike is up in Raleigh. I'm down in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, welcome to all the folks that have registered and joined us via the Zoom webinar. And welcome to all the folks tuning in to the V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. Please remember that we record these webinars. And if you signed up today, we will be sending you an email with a link to this recording. You can also find them on our YouTube channel. Also, my team will share contact information in the chat window in both the Zoom and the Facebook channel. Please send us some really good questions, but only good ones. We do not answer the silly, ridiculous questions. I'm totally kidding. We answer all the questions. Tonight, you're going to see how Mike uses V1 Pro mobile software on his iPad. He's actually going to be using multiple iP iPads for our broadcast. So we're going to do something really crazy, and we're going to give away an iPad tonight. So for all of you that registered for the Zoom and are attending live, you're already entered to win. All the people that I see in my Zoom, we are going to pick from one of you. If you're tuned into our broadcast through Facebook, please send an email to marketing at v1sports.com and you will also be entered. We're going to pick a random winner and I'll announce it like 8.45ish, so maybe in 45, 45, 50 minutes. A little bit about V1 Sports. We're a 25-year-old company. We are the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. How did we get partnered with a pressure mat company? Well, a few years ago, Body Track Medical reached out to my team at V1 Sports. They knew that they nailed pressure mapping technology, and we've been nailing software since 1995. Our development team was successful in integrating the pressure mat data with V1 Sports software, and we'll, if we are able to support both the mat and our software from our headquarters right up in Novi, Michigan. I'm really proud of our partnership with BodyTrack and my personal partnership with Terry Hashimoto. He is a good friend of mine. He is a great resource for me. I have, um, I have the ability to get lots of pressure mat questions answered pretty quickly, so if you have them, send them my way. The technologies integrate, and they're made right here in the USA. I'd also like to give a little shout out to my team behind the scenes. Anna, Haley, and Kelly work very hard to make these webinars happen. We're giving away a lot of really good information each time, and they work very hard to make it happen. I love you girls. Thank you so much. I am Mandy. I am the sales manager for V1 Sports based in Charleston. I love my job because I get to work with the best clients and put the coolest technology in our hands. I am not a golf professional. I'm just really passionate about great customer service and being part of a great team. I get to learn about this technology from some really great resources like Terry Hashimoto, Jake Thurm, Alex Clapp, and now my Carolina, Carolina neighbor, Mike Sullivan. Let me tell you a little bit about Mike Sullivan. He is the owner and director of instruction at the Mike Sullivan Golf School. Earlier, Mike sent me his bio, and I was kind of taken aback because the very top line of his bio is a Mark Twain quote, which is absolutely uh, the way that I feel. Find a job you enjoy doing, and you will never have to work a day in your life. Mike, isn't it awesome that we get to do this every day? It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty grateful. Awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty yeah. awesome. So Mike began his golf career in 1997 at Tuscaloosa Golf Country. Tuscawilla Country Club in Winter Springs, Florida, where he worked with men, women, juniors, retired golfers, and folks that frequented the mini tours. Before moving to North Carolina, Mike was the director of the Golf Advantage School, a teaching facility located at one of the largest private country clubs in the United States. Mike spent many years attending PGA Tour events, providing swing analysis to corporate golf clients, including tournaments at Pebble Beach, Augusta, the US Open, and the PGA Championship. Recently, Mike has been reaching golf students all over the world through the internet. Mike's YouTube videos receive over a million views per year and his clientele of students he assists through online swing analysis, analysis is growing at an exponential rate. Please guys, share Mike's web address. He can be reached via video analysis lessons on his web address they will share in our chat screen. Okay, Mike, let's talk a little bit about pressure. Um, thank you for joining us first. I should say thank you for doing this. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. You know, I've been, uh, I've been using V1 my whole teaching career pretty much. And yeah. I, I, I was fortunately or unfortunately, I didn't realize V1 been around 25 years. I've been doing this almost 25 years. So Isn't that cool? that's, uh, 
<laughs> Gary Pallas, getting old. One, getting one, of old. Starting, one of the founding members uh, back in 1995 is still with us, Gary Pallas. So it is very cool. We yeah, are much I've talked to him on the phone forever. Yeah. 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 Okay, Mike, so tell us a little bit about the basics of weight balance and pressure as it relates to the golf swing. Okay, basically. Basically. You know, where, are I, where, where am I looking here, man? You can look either way, which, Mike. Which I can see your face closer in the one next to you, but you can, you can, so why don't okay. you talk to your V1 Pro? Yeah, because we can see your face okay. closer there for now. So, so we're talking pressure in the golf swing, and the way that I really – would describe it simply as possible. And this is something we do with newer golfers in clinics is we need our pressure ahead of our golf club. So if we can get our pressure ahead of the club, then we're going to be able to get the club to descend into the ball before it hits the ground. That's, that's really the basics of what I try to do with the pressure mat. And there are a lot of golfers some pretty low handicappers that could do a better job of getting their pressure into their front side, either a little bit more or a little bit earlier or a little bit more, say, in their heel rather than their toe, uh, that really makes a dramatic impact on their ball striking. So um, I would say, in my experience, especially using the pressure mat, that number one thing is, is, is really being good at getting the pressure into your lead side early and continuously through impact. Okay. Cool. Um, you made a comment about the difference between tour players and beginners earlier when we were talking about this. Can you just talk to that a little bit? Right. So when you look at a, at a tour player and we're talking about using the pressure mat, right? Um, when you look at a tour player, you're going you're gonna to see a tour player in their backswing. And, and by the way, let's talk about pressure versus talking about moving your mass around. Okay. So when you look at an at a average person swinging a golf club, a guy with a job, well, when he moves his club to his backside, his body mass kind of goes back and then he goes forward, his body mass goes forward with it. And a lot of times the club is going forward and they're going backwards. Well, a tour player, they put pressure into the ground before they start actually moving back into their backswing. So if you look at a, at a tour player on one of these pressure mats, and I almost said, or a really good player, this can be pretty, some pretty good golfers don't do a great job with their pressure and they can do better. When you see a tour player moving pressure into their backside, you're going to see on the pressure, there's a, there's a little map. It's a little, and that's the trace we talked about. You're going to see the center pressure ball moving into their back foot long before the club gets back there. And then you're going to see the pressure moving forward to their front foot. In most cases, before the club even finishes the backswing, they've got pressure going forward. And it's the type of thing that if you try to explain it to somebody, get somebody to do it without – being able to see what's happening, it's like, what are you talking about? Because they can't do it smoothly. Right. Um, and then when you see a regular person or an average, actually, I shouldn't say average golfer, but a recreational golfer, <laughs> so many of them, they just don't have, they don't know what they're supposed to feel. And when they can look at this pressure ball going back and forth and they can see what they're doing to make it happen, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what it can do for people. I mean, I can't stress enough how you can learn through self-discovery of using the pressure mat so you can know what you're supposed to be feeling when you hit the ball. I love, Mike, I love this webinar with you because you love the pressure mat as much as I do, but specifically the, as excited as you get, I can see your pressure moving down. Okay, in the yeah, okay. I can see, yeah. it would be like me because everyone knows how, how much I love the mat and I love, you're like getting excited and, and it's, we're, we're seeing that in your pressure. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, you know, everyone in golf sort of says this feel and real is two different things. I think that means a lot here, right? You, you think you're doing one thing, but you could never really see what you're doing with your pressure unless you're looking at data like this off of a mat. Um, when I demonstrate it, Mandy, when I demo it, I set that up so I can see it. Because <laughs> feel is not real. It's just not. So I want to be able to see it. That's so why fun. I set that up there. Um, okay, so earlier we talked about, you, I know that you put almost all of your new students on the pressure mat. Um, and you made a comment about how quickly you can make a change. Can you talk to us about that? You know, my question is, I know that you start most students. How long does it take for you to make a difference or a change or have a light bulb go off for a new student using the mat? So here's how it goes. New student gets on the mat. All right. And when they stand up there, a PJ tour player in the U S they have 55% of their weight in their front foot. That's the average on the PJ tour. 
the European tour is 60%. And I know you know why, right? Mm -hmm. Why do the Europeans have more weight in their front foot than the Americans? I don't know that. The answer they hit the ball that. lower. There's more wind. Okay. Right? So on the PGA tour, 55% is on their lead side. When I put a golfer on the mat, they stand up there. They usually have more weight on their back foot. And then I get them into moving so that they've got 55% of their weight in their front foot. And, and they can see it looking right on the screen. There's no question. They're looking at it. And they can see what's going on. They go, wow, that's so much weight on my front foot. By the end of the class, they're, they have 70% of their front foot. They, 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 they've, they've adjusted that quickly in one lesson that they're set up. What used to feel incredibly awkward, they're overdoing it. And that's what we want to do is exaggerate it. And then when it comes to actually, what I mentioned before about how the tour players get the pressure going back really early and the pressure moves, not necessarily the mass of the body moves. And when we get the full screen, we'll see more of that. Um, by the end of the lesson, they're, 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 they have a really good idea. And, and the process is when you first get on the mat, you think you're never going to figure it out. The first few minutes, it's like, this isn't working. I'm, and especially if there's an instructor nearby and I'm showing them, yeah, just get that thing going, bap, 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 bap. And they're, what? They, they have no, they can't do it. So you're going to think you can't do it. So if you don't have one of the mats and you're thinking about getting one, if you try one out, you, at first you're going to feel like it's not, I can't do it, but you can. So what seems like a long time, that 10 or 15 minutes in an hour, bam, you're so much better on it. You know, right. you want to be able to, you know, and like I said before, I wouldn't say use it for an hour and you're done because I want to see my pressure today as we do the demonstration because I want to make sure that I'm doing what I say I'm doing. But incredible difference in, in an hour, especially, you know, I've never um, like left someone with a mat and had to try it for themselves, but with instruction, you know, an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So we did, we did that with a couple of webinars ago and we had a home studio guy and he got drills. He called me this afternoon. He's like, is Mike going to give us some drills tonight? I want to, I want to use some new, you know, new drills on my mat. So there are people using them at home. I have two questions that came into the chat window that I want to um, ask you. It kind of applies to our question. Sure. Uh, Brandon asked, and, and I actually know the answer to this too, what age you would start someone on the mat. And I want to answer that a little bit. Um, Zach at, on Daniel on is one of my customers. I saw him put a, seven-year-old on the mat. It was her very first golf lesson. And he put her on the mat before he even gave her a golf club. And all he did was he had her stand on one foot and then the other foot and then one foot and then the other foot. And he started talking to her about her body and the golf swing before he even put a club. So my answer to that was seven for someone that's never even swung a club. Mike, what do you think? What's the, what, what age would you start someone on the mat? I would say any age where you're working with them in a private lesson would certainly be old enough. So, and it, some kids are just going to jump around, I guess, but I've never had anyone not be interested in it. Um, right. The one little thing is that young kids are so flexible that they may have some things come up that you're not really ready for. Um, and there's been some things that have happened with junior golfers where some coaches have coached them out of some real positive things. Mm. Um, I'd be careful about that. It wouldn't be too, I wouldn't say, Hey, you have to do this trace just like Dustin Johnson does it but I, I don't think there's any ages too young, especially when we're talking about the basics of getting the kids to get onto their front side. Right. So I don't think, I don't think we can really go too young. Okay. Um, really quickly, you mentioned that the uh, percentage of pressure in the toes was 50 and 60 for U S and European golfers. They're asking if that's the same for all the clubs. Um, surprisingly, and this is something I got from watching one of Jake Thurm's training um, for the most part front foot. So not necessarily heel toe, Front foot, you're going to have about 55% of your front foot, about 45% of your front on your back foot for almost all the clubs. And that's, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle room there for sure. Um, so, so in driver to wedge, I would go at 55, 45. Yes, I, I would okay. do that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and really quickly before I move on, the cost of the mat. Thank you, Barry, for asking that. The mat retails for $34.99. However, uh, there is a special and it is $3,000 right now. Um, I will also tell you just to be crazy. If anyone tuned in tonight calls me and buys a pressure mat, I will give you one free year of software, um, for the first year, just because it's, we're in the Carolinas and we should do that tonight. Okay. Uh, my first, my series is called Tuesday traces, Mike, all of the people that I've invited, we very specifically have talked about and diagnosed a specific trace. Now, earlier I asked you about that. 
and I asked you what trace we were going to be diagnosing so that we could have a slide set up to talk about it. You had a very interesting answer to diagnosing a trace. Can you talk to me about that? Because I, I really like your answer about this and, and takes a little I, bit of pressure out of golf, from golf pros, I think. I, I, don't, I don't worry about that too much. I, and here's what I guess the philosophy is. And I'm just me, right? I want you to do it the way it's going to help you hit better shots. And that means getting pressure early into your lead side. Like that's, that's the number one thing you want to make sure of. And a lot of the other stuff can work its way out. And we talk about doing a few things. And we're going to do one drill with the long, the long stick that's going to talk a little bit about correcting, like, probably a, the fish hook trace. Um, so I can give you two right off the top of the, you know, the fish hook and the scatter that you see. Right. You know, you work with them the same way. We, we just want to communicate what that pressure transfer is, and you can see it. And it becomes very easy to – get right to the bottom of it. I, I love that. I think there's a lot of golf professionals that call me and they say, how do I learn how to use it? And I say, well, we have a, a deck of the top 10 traces. And well, how do I figure them out? Well, you'll eventually start working it out. But working with you, I love that because I love, you know, I tell people, I'm like, get it, stand on it. You know your own swing, like work with it. But I love that you just use it based on weight shift to make the golfer better, whoever they are. I think that um, makes it really, really easy. Okay. Um, I have got, that's not all my questions, but I'd really like to dive into your student that want that student is his name, Charles. My student that's on here. Yeah. yeah I'm ready for you to start showing some. Oh, so we'll look at like, uh, Hugh. That's yeah. Hugh, start with, Hugh, right. Sorry. Okay, Hugh, good. Hugh. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So bear with me. I'll do my best not to disconnect us. Right. Yeah. You get that set up. I'm going to answer one more question. Um, yes, the pressure mat is great for putting. Absolutely. Do you ever use it for putting, Mike? Yes, I do use it for putting. Absolutely. And it's pretty easy to see when stuff's going right and stuff's going wrong. Okay. Do we have Hugh up there? We do. We have Hugh. All right. Hugh, if you're watching, sorry about this, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great guy, by the way. All right. Okay. So take a look at what Hugh's doing here. So um, Hugh is, he took a little bit of time off from golf and he's had a tough time over the last, over the last few years really getting, um, getting into the game and playing and practicing as much as he wants to. Hugh is having trouble hitting thin shots and fat shots, and he's having trouble with distance, okay? So first, what I want you to do is just take a look at, I'm, I'm going to move this, this little trace around. Can you see that moving, Mandy? Yes, I can. Okay, so I move that trace over. I can make it bigger. Look, I can even do that with it, right? And we're going to look at what's going on with his pressure into the ground. So the, that blob on the left is his left foot, and the blob on the right is his right foot. And the thing in the middle is his center of pressure. Now, here's a tip for everybody watching this. So if you're watching this, and you want to learn something about your own pressure mat, pay attention to this. When you use it, stand on the pressure mat for a few seconds until you see that little white ball right in the middle, right in the center of those crosshairs, okay? Because then you're going to get an accurate reading as what's going on relative to front and back foot. Notice Hewitt's setup is 57% of his weight in his back foot, okay? And Mike, move your graph over just a little bit. And, and just uh, to the left so that we can see the pressure. There you go. There you go. Now we can see the numbers, the 51 in the heel and the four, or the toe and 49 okay. in the heel. There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. So notice he's got 57% on his back foot. Now we'd rather have it on his front foot, but here's something that can happen, Mandy. Yes. Uh, it's very common for somebody to push forward a little bit before they go back. So yep. I'm not, we, we're not going to just get too concerned until so, so we see what happens in a swing here. And he's probably getting set up and everything. So once, you know, once I start recording, I start hitting recording once he's getting, getting that uh, little pressure ball in the middle. So now he's getting started. He's, he's 53, 47 again. Isn't that funny? So as he goes back, you're going to see this pressure starting to go back into his back foot. Now it's moving a little bit towards the toe. Okay. Now think about this, and this is, and Mandy, this is why I don't, I don't try to like just figure out traces and know like, oh, this trace is going to give this fix. Just right. think common sense wise. So mm -hmm. when he turns back, see his right hip is moving a little bit behind his right heel. Yep. 
Well, he should be putting pressure more in his heel then, shouldn't he? But you can see he's moving a little more in the toe area. Yeah. And what happens a lot of times, yeah, what happens a lot of times is when people are used to sitting down and, and he sits down sometimes for work and you're sitting down all the time, you're the front of your legs get tight and you don't want to use your glutes. So he's using too much of his hip flexors in his backswing here. And you, it's evident by looking at the trace. All right. Just awareness wise, we can help with that without even like putting him in the gym necessarily. So he's going back. Now we need to move that pressure forward, right? Right. So watch what happens. That pressure starts moving forward with the club, but see his club is dropping, but the pressure is just hanging. So he's not putting any pressure towards his front foot. Right now he's got 75% of his pressure still in his trail leg. He's hmm. not going to get good consistency in triple force. He's not going to be able to swing the club very well because he's not, he's not using the ground properly, right? He yeah. should have that pressure ball way forward. Now watch what happens. Now he starts to get it going forward. And then when he gets kind of near impact, the club is starting to release from his wrist. Watch what his pressure does. It goes back into his back foot again. And when he hits that ball, he's got 80% of his pressures in his back foot. And I'll tell you what, if you follow football, they tell you that a quarterback should never throw a ball off his back foot because it's going to be intercepted. You can't put anything on it. It's exactly what he's doing. Does this make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. Sure okay. does. Okay. Now, all right, now. So let's just talk about the holistic part of the golfer here. And I don't mean to get too like new age or anything, but he's doing more than working with the ground. He's trying to hit a ball with a stick, right? Right. Take a look at his club face. Okay. So we know he's aiming up here. I set him up parallel to his target line on the mat. I recommend putting alignment sticks down. I should have done that. Should have on me, right? That's Watch okay. him. On software. We can see it with that line. So watch as he comes back. Look at this club face fan open immediately. So his club face is he's open in that club face wide open. Now you don't, you're not a golf professional, Mandy, right? I'm but a beginner golfer. I, total beginner. Okay. If you, if you fan the, the face wide open coming back, you're going to try to square it coming through. I promise. So he's got this face working wide open the whole way. And then what he's going to do is to try to square the face up. He's going to lean back into his back foot to try to flip that face and square it up somehow. And what that's doing for him is that's going to, number one, when he strikes the ball, the club head is way ahead of his hand. So he's flipping at the, at the ball. He's adding loft to his shot. So he's reducing distance. And he's also bottoming out before he gets to the ball. So he's going to hit the ground before he hits the ball, or he's going to catch the ball on the way up and he's going to skull it or thin it. That should be a logical explanation as to what's going on. Right? Right. Okay. So we worked with him on the pressure mat and we worked on his club face. Let's see what it looks like a couple weeks later. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not going to do that one. This is a driver at the end of the session. I want to use an iron. Let's hope this is it. All right. Now I can tell already looking at his trace, Notice how if on the right-hand side, you can see the trace. It's uh, those lines going back and forth, right? Yep. See how they're both right on the equator? Yep. That is, that is not a high handicapper look right there. That is a great look, okay? So let's see what he does now. Watch the trace now. See, he bumped it forward? Yep. So he gave a little bump forward now, so he got that concept. Now watch that. See the trace is going into his back foot as he goes back. It's not up in the toe anymore, is it? Now yeah. he's got the thing more down in the heel, 54% in the heel. Now watch the downswing. That pressure is moving forward all the way. It's never backing up and it's never, it's never pausing. And he's hitting better shots now. Okay. Now something that goes with it though, it's not just that. Oh, let me just fix this comparison. I'm sorry. I want to get this comparison right because I think it's important. All right. So on the left is his original shot, right? So yep. look here on the left. I'm going to put the target line down again. Yep. So watch his club face again on the left. This was day one. See the wide open club face? Pointing way out to the right. Now watch, now watch the, the more recent one. See the club face? Yep. So his club oh, yeah. face is no longer wide open 
So in addition to understanding the trace and, the, and moving the pressure correctly, he's actually incentivized to make the correct trace and to use the ground the right way. Amazing. So it, it's more than, you know, when you work on one thing and get one thing right, you're also incentivizing other things to go right. That's and so that, cool. That's, hey, uh, Mike, how much time was between these two videos? How many lessons? How much time did that take you? Let's take a look. Let's go back here. So lesson number one was on August 5th. Okay. The most recent one was August 26th. So that's what, um, 15 days? What, no, what is that? 26 minus five, 21 days, three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Pretty awesome. So, so that was uh, two lessons, I believe. Maybe, let me see, we had them on the fifth, three, three lessons, the fifth, the 15th, and the 26th. So three lessons. Amazing. Yeah. He, did, he did a great job. He did a great job. And how does Hugh feel now? What would he say about the pressure map? He's a very happy guy. He, and, 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 you know, at the end of his lesson last week, we got a hit and driver and he was killing the thing. And he was so happy um, because he was having fun hitting that ball and he had confidence and it was just, it was super. And I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I think it's interesting. I, I don't know if you have another student video to pull up, but I do think it's interesting yeah. to look at the same student with a different club. Do you have anything to say? I, I, this is totally not, I don't know if we, we didn't plan this, but I saw a driver with Hugh. Is there anything uh, that we should tell the audience about a different club with Hugh specifically now that we've sort of yep. understand what his trace looks like? So let's watch it. Um, let's go back to Hugh. While you pull that up, I'm going to answer a question really quick from Carl. Sure. He asked, Mike, do you, once you analyze a student's weight shift using the mat, do you send them home with a recommended swing aid to reinforce the lesson taught at your studio? Yes. Yeah, so what I do, and here's the thing, Mandy, that when I'm working with people with the mat, which is most people, which is most lessons, I'm working with people full swing. I realize that most people don't, don't own one. And so I really try to come up with a way that they can get the pressure to work correctly without seeing the screen, because I want to give them a drill that they can, that they can take home with them. That's going to help them retain the feel. Does that make sense? What I'm saying, if exactly. they had the pressure mat, it would be a different story. It'd be great if everybody had one, which is really nice that if you've got like a home studio or something, you've already got a little bit of investment going on in your golf game this is a great thing to consider. Yeah. Um, but I do give them drills, but the way, the way that I figure out, and before I even had the pressure mat, before I had like any of the technology, with video, what I like to do is I like to figure out what we're gonna work on, what does the person have to change, and then what drill can we work on that makes the student demonstrate the change we're trying to make. Right. So the dr I don't just, I, I don't think it really makes a ton of sense to just, oh, well this drill fixes that, well, this drill fixes that for some people. And sometimes it's a different drill. Sometimes it's a different conversation. Sometimes you got to work on it later. So um, I do give, after every lesson, I give every student usually more than one drill to work on in between lessons. Right. I also think that once you understand what your body and weight is doing in your golf swing, it just once, like once you go through that just once, you have a better understanding of, of weight and shift. Um, and, and also part of my answer to this as doing these Tuesday traces I've challenged the pros to share drills that they give. And so Mike, all of the pros have given us really fun, funny and fun drills. We did the tennis ball drill and the cheek checker with, with Jake. And I know Mike in a minute is going to use a big old PVC pipe and do something crazy. So um, pool noodles I see are coming up. Yes. Yeah, so there's all sorts of drills, but I think understanding pressure um, to begin with and then having B1 pro B1 golf to be able to swing, send, you know, send your swing videos back to your instructor is also Super helpful. Okay, let's look yeah, And by the way, and real quick, Mandy. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna do video, um, it really helps out the instructor if you use the V1 app instead of just emailing the video or using like a Google Dropbox or something like that. It really, you're helping your instructor make his job a lot easier and get, he can analyze your swing faster if you use V1. So and that's it's free. Really, really helpful. It's free if you're a student. And what? It's free. The app is oh, free. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, really? So they can download the home app for nothing, huh? They get the V1 Golf app for free all day long. And I think Kelly's got a special on it right now. So if you email Kelly or marketing, she can let you know if there's a special on the V1 Golf. 
Uh, there is an upgrade that's ad free, but it's always going to be free unless you want to get that ad free version. Okay, let's oh, look at Hugh's awesome. driver swing with the okay, map. And let's bring up his his last really good iron shot. Okay. Too, right. All right. So on the right hand side, we've got the iron shot we just looked at. So, 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 Mandy, you're watching this. You're an intelligent person, right? What do you yeah. see different in these two traces? Just looking at them. The, the, the trace, the one on the left is not as linear as the one on the right. Correct. So a lot of times when you see people hitting drivers, they do get a little bit more up in their toes when they're hitting the driver. You, you will see a little bit of that sometimes. Yep. Um, let's watch what happens with the pressure. Now, let's just watch it. So just like before, he bumps way forward, right? Yep. Gets it coming back. He's hanging around a long time. He's really he, hanging back, isn't he? Yeah. He is really hanging back. So sometimes in an effort, I, I, now what I do like is you don't see it stalling out. It's continuing to move, right. right? So a lot of times, like right about an impact, Mandy, you'll see like a little bit of a, it looks like a little barb on a hook or something where the, the person stops moving their weight forward and comes back a little bit. So he's continuous, which is good. And this is one of the balls he hit really well. So with him with his driver, he's hanging back a little bit, and we'd like to be able to get him to get the sense of getting the pressure to into his lead foot earlier. And what I'd like to do also is, and I don't know if the, the home users get this option when, when they get the mat. I guess if you can swing the mat, you can swing the V1 Pro software, I'd say. But if I bring in a tour player with a driver, so this is James Hahn with his driver. <laughs> right yep and and this is just this is a model app that that bv1 gives us a model swing let's watch this pressure there he is he's hanging see he's moving forward a little bit right here yep and then he's, he's going to drop back a little bit and then he's going to unleash it but see how early the pressure goes forward right now notice he is going to stall out a little bit just for a moment and then get through it. One of the things, so, so I guess the big thing is here for a, you know, a, a normal person, recreational golfer, I'll stop saying normal person, right? <laughs> recreational golfer, they're, they, it's really always a challenge to get that pressure into the lead foot earlier, earlier, earlier. Another thing you'll notice about our tour player is he's getting that pressure into the heel at the end of the swing on his left side on his front foot. That's something that we really need to do. Do you know why? No. Any idea? So look at, look at his hips. So look at his lead hip. So when we start our downswing, we start our backswing, for the most part, it kind of starts more with our shoulders than our lower body. The shoulders kind of start the backswing. And then what happens is as the club is finishing the backswing, our lower body, our feet work with the ground and we start to move forward. So not only is pressure move forward, there's a little bit of a lateral movement of our hips forward. And our hips are then going to rotate. So our left hip starts to work behind our left heel. And that's why you see the pressure going down to the left heel. All right. Mm -hmm. If you look at a face on view of someone, I'm just going to keep going here if you're okay with that. Yes, please. I'm right? loving this. So that's if we look at a face on view of somebody. Okay. Oh, I've got a great guy here. I've got a lot of great students. This is Robbie. Let's see if I got pressure on this swing. Okay. Now, Ooh. don't be alarmed by all those. Don't be alarmed yet because that could be him getting ready before he hits a shot. Now, he doesn't have a ball here. He doesn't have a ball, right? Right. So he's making a practice swing. He's in his back foot. See, he's hanging out a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Then when he goes to hit it, he's got the weight in his front foot. And then he gets down the heel a little bit, which, yeah, that's great. Then it comes backwards. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can notice when I'm hitting a shot. That's all pitch shots. We didn't use it. There we go. All right. We didn't have this race on that one. I'm going to bring in Shane. 
you know, that these things, you lose track of who you're doing what with, and where their swings are. While you look for that, Larry, um, how do you store the mat when not in use? The mat rolls up. It's in a, uh, you can leave it on the floor. You don't have to roll it up. Or you can just put it in the, the carrying case and uh, put it anywhere. Mine stays on the floor. It's easier to use it that way, right? Yep. All right, here we go. Here's another person, okay? First lesson. First lesson. Nice. Tell us so, about it. At setup, he's got 69% of his weight in his front foot. That's more than we need, right? He's gonna go back in his back foot. Now watch the trace, watch the pressure where it goes on the way down. See it moving up into the toe? Yes. Right? Now watch his impact position of the club is sneaking by his hands there, right? Just yeah. think of how hard it would be to turn your hips through, your, through impact and achieve a good impact position if all of your pressure is up in the toes of your lead foot. Holly, and it's so funny. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Can everybody so, see so, that? That we can actually see the amount of percent in the gray box. It's a hundred percent on each foot. I hope everyone can see that. Um, up on his toes. Amazing. Up Great. on his toes. Yeah. Now it is possible, by the way. Some good players look a little bit like that. Like you've seen Justin Thomas up on his toes when he hits when he hits shots well he's pushing into the ground so hard with his feet that there's like a, a little reverb of the ground coming back and that's why he looks like that this is not that situation okay okay this is someone who's just he's just all the way up on his toes and when i was standing here doing the lesson i was just watching the heels come up off the ground and you can see he's not able to really get through the shot very well and i'm going to show you if you'd like a drill that we did together to help him get get out of that yeah, I want you to show the drill to fix that. And then we'll do our iPad giveaway. And then I want you to show us the drill with the PVC, with the pipe. That, well, that was the drill. That was it. Yeah, but we didn't The PVC see drill. <laughs> uh, it, no, it does not matter how you're standing on the mat. You can stand on the mat in your normal golf stance. And you don't have to be any, in, in any certain part of the mat. You'll see Mike is not, he's not, He's not making note of where his feet are. He's just standing on it um, and swinging. Mike, I have, a, I have a question from Greg sure. Tart. Two questions. On the backswing weight-wise, more on the back foot, should it be a little more in the heels as you get to the top of the backswing? So think about it. I'm going to try to get on a screen. I, I don't know. Are you showing my screen or, or your screen? Because or, I'm on something that's not very appealing. It's just a blank. Uh, so to answer the question, go ahead. Think okay. about it, right? So if you think about it, when, when we make a backswing, right? Here's Hugh. Yep. When we make a backswing, our right, our right hip is going to work back behind our right heel a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it would be a great thing to have a little more pressure in our right heel. You can see that he's got a little more pressure in his right heel than, than in his right toe side. So okay. generally you're going to see that in the back swing, you're going to see it kind of get in the heel and then it's going to get up in the toe as the hip comes, comes over and then back to the front side. We just don't want to usually a huge swing in there. Now I'm telling you this as my own, I hate to say my own preference, but just looking generally. So if you've got somebody who's got a trace that's obviously not correct, and by the way, by, by having a trace that's obviously not correct, all we're saying is he's not using the ground very well. We'd pro we would love to see him get a little bit more in the heel in the backswing. But if somebody is getting pressure going, if somebody's getting pressure into his front side early and he's, you know, I've got the luxury, I've got a, a launch monitor so I can see his angle of attack. I can see his club face uh, angle and his path and all that. Mm -hmm. um, we use all that. So you don't, we don't have to, to, put everybody in one little box they have to be in. And I, and if you look at the other content that anyone puts out there, the other, the other information, there are great players doing a lot of different things, but what they're not doing, they're not leaving the, the, the pressure in the back foot. They're all getting to their lead side early. So the number one thing is we need to get into that lead side early. That's the thing to really be focusing on. Okay.
That's awesome. Um, I'm going to answer a question really quick. Does the center of pressure not calibrate when the player stands still on the mat? Thank you, Andrew. Yes, it does. We ask everybody to freeze for just a second, and that center of pressure dot will um, will go into those crosshairs, and then you can swing. So yes, there it calibrates. Takes about a second. We just say freeze, and then it will calibrate. Um, guess what, Mike? What? We should give away an iPad. Great. By the way, somebody asked about is it an iPad or an iPad Pro? I've got both. The iPads work for this just as well. So you don't need the pro. We're going to, we're going to give away an iPad tonight. And my team has, has randomly selected someone. I did not know who they were picking. However, I do know who they picked. She happens to be a Carolina girl. <laughs> so uh, Krista Dutton has won the iPad for tonight. Thank you for joining us, Krista. Super excited that um, you won it. I had no idea that that was going to happen like that. So, um, Krista, please send me an email or I will reach out to you. I definitely have it. Uh, Mike, do you know Krista? I don't. I don't think I know Krista. Is she yeah. from Raleigh? So, no, she's a South Carolina girl. Okay, okay. South Carolina. But that's pretty cool. We did not pick you because you're from the Carolinas. That was totally random. However, I do know her. So, I'm thrilled uh, that we get to send Krista an iPad. Maybe I'll hand deliver it. So, thanks. Okay. Do you have another student and our drill? We have to leave our, our audience with the drill, Mike. Yes, so here's the drill I wanna show you. And this is gonna be great for that other one that we showed where the, the student was all the way back on the, on the front foot at impact. Are you, are you ready for this? This is a great one. Okay, can, we, can you unshare your V1 so we can see you yes. bigger? Yes. How are we doing? There we go. Perfect. Okay. So are you, are you, you have the full shot here with the mat and everything in view? We sure do. And the, all right. Let, so, so here, this is, this is great. So if I'm not on the mat, I get on the mat, right? Now I can't really see my trace. So I'm a little, I'm at a disadvantage. You know, feel is not real, right? So you can tell me, Mandy, has the, has the mat found me in the middle? Yes. Yes, Lauren's watching too. Matt's found me in the middle. All right. So here's the problem. The pressure getting into the, the toe of that front foot. Can right. you see that thing moving up in the toe, right? Yep. So yep. again, um, back foot, front foot, back foot, front foot, right? So I'm in the toe. So what I love to have people do is grab, by the way, I think some of the, some of the best training aids are the free ones. You know that? I, I think and they don't sell them. I love you it. You can't make money. I love it. I love cutting a tennis ball in half, a pool noodle, a chair behind the butt for the cheek cheek. I love that you pulled out a PVC pipe. I mean, I sell yeah. the coolest golf technology, and then all my pros are using like construction equipment for training. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. I know, like the alignment stick, right? <laughs> um, so this actually is like the 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 the, the chair one but it's right? a different way to do it. So the previous person who asked about giving a drill, this is gonna do this, the same sort of thing as that chair one where you keep your rear end on the chair, you keep your rear end on the wall. But in this instance, you're gonna use a broomstick or this happens to be a piece of PVC pipe we had laying around, right? <laughs> so here we go. Notice as I set up, this, the end of the stick, it's down like in a driver position or something, but the, 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 the business end of the stick is up here past my hip. All right. Am I in the middle of that mat? Yes. Pressure good? All yep. right. So now watch me do it wrong. Yep. Lots of those. And I'm hitting myself. I'm hitting myself with the stick. All right. Now watch me get pressure forward and into the heel. Are we centered? No. Uh, yep. Now you are. Okay. All right. And that should have gone down in the heel. Did we get down in the heel, Lauren? Yeah. Right? It did. Yeah. So, but, but when, you, when you swing with one of these long broomsticks or PVC pipes, it's going to help you get your lower body moving forward and your hip out behind your heel. And what's great is I'll do this with the, um, you know, the, the camera, the camera, the iPad looking right at me, my device looking right at me, and I'll see real time what's going on. And, I, and I'm trying to train people. So if, you, if you're watching this right now, you don't have a mat yet, and you get one, 
when you first get on that mat, it's going to be just try to get this little pressure ball moving back and forth. And at first people are kind of doing this, <laughs> right? And I don't know how much it's moving. It's probably not doing a whole heck of a lot, right? Well, not then much. try to get it to go. What's that, Mandy? Not much, but a little. Okay. Try to get it to go faster. So okay, I, get, see, I see a lot of this stuff, right? Yep. If you think I got bad rhythm, you see some of these guys, right? Okay, <laughs> now they're going to learn. I say, okay, let's see if we can have less mass movement but more pressure movement. And they start to get confused a little. But we're looking for this sort of a thing, right? See that pressure moving back and forth? Oh, yeah. So when I get like, I've got one student named Ben Brown, who really good player. He gets on the mat first time, never used it before. He gets up there. Just his waggle, that pressure is moving all over the place. Boom, huh. boom. And that's that little move right there. Are we going back and forth hard, Lauren? This little move right here, at first, the overwhelming majority of people are not going to be able to do that with that pressure ball. It's just not going to happen. Like show right? that one more. Show that. That is so significant. Ready? What you just did. Boom, so boom. wait, show it. Show boom, it the, the beginner way where I'm moving back and forth. Show that. Bear, that is so fast. Okay, now. And, then it's, and, then, now, and they'll, they'll do this, Mandy. Right? Yep. And I'm trying to get them to do more. But don't, it's not golf. Yep. Boy, that's, that's what I'm trying that, to get into. That's this one thing right there is. And one other little movement thing I like to show you that this is really helpful. And I, I do this if I'm in a big class and no one can get on a mat or anything. So take a golf club. And I'm going to really do all I can not to swing the club with my fingers. Okay. Okay. I want to get my pressure to move the club. Okay. You hand this club to a, a tour player or someone who uses this mat and knows how to use it. They're gonna get that pressure ahead of the swing of the club. See how I'm moving forward? My pressure is going forward way before the club, right? So my yep. pressure into the ground is swinging that club. Yep. When someone first learn, tries to learn this, they're gonna do more like this. And their pressure is moving late and th the pressure is moving with the swing of the club. Yeah. We got to get the pressure going ahead of the club. Right? Yeah. That's what you want to try to do. And, and so that's, what, that's, that's one of the drills that we'll have people do or to give them an understanding of what's happening. Because once that, if that pressure is going forward, you're, that club is coming, the whole thing, hold the lag, hands ahead, all that. If your pressure is working forward you're, and you're getting into that heel, it's not that tough. It, it's, it's amazing. And it's, it's not that tough to figure it out, but you can't, if you've never done it that way, you, you gotta figure out how to do it. Feel is not really, you gotta be able to see what it is that you're actually doing. And that's, yeah. this is why this thing works out so great. Wow, I, that, that visual you just gave, that is amazing. So we have a question, we have only a few more minutes and I, I've got to ask you this question. David really wants to know how you use it for putting. Can you talk to us a little bit or maybe even show? I know yeah, so, so for putting, by the way, did you did you notice the dog in here, Mandy? I did. I was wondering if the, if it picks up the pressure on the dog's paws. She's laid down on enough times. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. So Lauren or Mandy, can you guys take a look at my pressure right now? Yeah. Let your let let's let you center real quick. Let me get this thing so you can see the ball and everything. Um, we use this. Was it last night we used this? Yeah, it's only Tuesday. It must have been. <laughs> Last night. All right, are we centered here? Yep, you're good. All right, I like to have a little more weight in my front foot. Okay. So what we're looking for is, and it's, it's an obvious thing. Ready? Do you see that pressure moving back? Did they hit that ball? Hard, it's hard to see because it's so slow and that screen small, but okay, slightly. And you know, yeah, we so, can't see the numbers. For all the audience, there are numbers on that graph. We can't see it because it's just small, but you can, it's, there's very clear data when it's right So now. Lauren's live. Lauren, can you just let us know what the numbers are on this thing? And it's not, so it's not going to, you're not going to see this huge transfer. Boy, I hope you're not going to, because we're not going that far, right? <laughs> but with the putting, right, I want to be still, I'm going to have a little more weight in my front foot. So where are my front and uh, back, Lauren? 
Okay, so I'm 60-40, right? And I'm going to stay on my front side, tick, tock. Now, did I go back at all my weight transfer? No pressure back? Yeah. So what I see a lot of is I see when people have this, a lot of movement in their putting, and, and you can record yourself as you do it, you'll see as, as their putter is coming towards the ball, you'll see pressure moving to their back foot. You'll see that. And so you use the video and you can see if you're moving or not. And then you can see what, if there's any pressure going on because you said it, you can't see the pressure, right? You can't see the pressure. So you can look at the video with the pressure mat and see if you're moving back or forward a little bit. And usually you're going to see it moving back if there's a problem. Right. Yeah. Awesome. By the way, pitch shots are great too. Pitch shots are great with this thing. Of course. Okay. So like, do we have a second? Do you have a yeah, second? Yeah, you do. And you know, so you, look, so, do you ever take it out and put it in a sand trap and an uneven lie? You know, I haven't done that yet. I can't believe I haven't done that. I can't believe you haven't done that either. I have a lot of people that do that. And, yeah, and uh, I, you know, it's just, you just brush it off. Super easy. Oh, yeah. I take, and every day this is outside usually. All right. So we've got some, we got some people out there hitting balls, but they're not going to mind. I'm going to hit it right over their head. All right. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> So what's the most common problem with a pitch? Fat or thin, right? Yep. So which way is the pressure moving when you hit it fat or thin, you think? It's going back. Back, Go yeah. forward. Can you see my iPad with the pressure on it? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Oh, am I centered? Yes, you are. All right. That, that, should, that probably didn't look too good, did it? It, it looked linear, but I can't see the numbers, but the trace kind of looked linear to me. Did it go on my back foot? Yeah, Lauren says it was way in the back foot. So now we're going to do a better job. So now I'm going to get the pressure moving more forward with the shot. And again, think about the drill with the, with the PBC. So I'm thinking of that left hip moving forward and get behind the heel. Boom. So it's, a, it's almost as if this hip pulling behind the heels like, pulls the club through. So the hip better be ahead of the club, right? How was that one? Better? A little heavy, I think. So it's great for pitches because people a lot of times don't, they're thinking that if they're having trouble with their pitches, they're all about what their hands are doing. They're not thinking at all about how they're using the ground when they're hitting those pitch shots. Yeah. Awesome. So we talked about weight driver versus iron. We talked about putting. We talked about chipping. We talked about drills. We talked about not worrying too much about diagnosing the trace. We showed how to use V1 Pro Mobile in lots of different ways. You guys, nothing is hardwired in Mike's studio right now. His iPad is connected to that mat wirelessly. Um, that also makes it very easy to take it outside. Uh, let me just look for a few questions to make sure where can I take lessons from Mike and the pressure mat. Okay, uh, Mike is based in Raleigh. Uh, if you're not based in Raleigh, you can go to Mike's website and sign up for a remote lesson with him. He will ask you to submit swings through the V1 Golf app. Uh, my team will put Mike's web address in the chat. Please follow Mike on all his social channels. Connect with him via email and check out his website. Um, follow his social channels because he puts up really great videos of the pressure mat before and after and information. Uh, let me just make sure I got all the last few questions. Randy Throgmorton, please email customer. Oh, they got it. Uh, we got to make sure we get him some software. Um, I think we got all the questions. If I missed any questions, please, please feel free to email me, me or my team. Uh, please contact Mike. He's amazing. And um, this is really, yes, it's great for all levels. I would like to say thank you so much to Mike. Mike, you are awesome. The information you shared tonight is so great. I, 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 I learned enough myself to make it all worth it, <laughs> much less the 200 people that joined us tonight. Thank you so much. And Lauren, well, thank, thank you for having me. Are you kidding? Lauren, says thank you. <laughs> she's, she's, 
She's behind the scenes on this She's one. your producer. Yeah. She's your producer. So, Mike, thank you. If you have anything else to say, please, please share with our audience before we uh, check out. Don't have expectations on the golf course and make sure, try to have fun. Just try to have fun and get your pressure on your front foot early. How about that? Pressure on the front foot early. That's easy. That's, that's a good thing to remember. You don't need to have a special trace diagnosis to figure that out. Y'all, thank you so much. We're going to check out. Please feel free to send us messages. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. We're going to do this again. We do it every Tuesday. We'll have another fun guest. And we will definitely have Mike back again soon. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you. It was great. Have a good one.